Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our Views back with another video and we have a big update coming for iOS 17 and it will be out tomorrow. iOS 17.1 is coming out and even though it went just through three beta stages and it doesn't have a ton of new features and changes, this is actually a really, really important update and I believe every iPhone user must update as soon as possible to iOS 17.1. Now in this video, we're going to talk about this update, everything you need to know and why it is important for iPhone users. But first of all, let's talk about the last update that Apple has released. They actually have released a second version of the RC version of iOS 17.1 and this is the size of this update now i believe this will most likely be the size that you will get when you update your device from ios 17.0.3 to the new ios 17.1 so it should be somewhere around 400 megabytes and the build number for this new release is 21b 77 this is most likely the number that you're also getting with the public release of ios 17.1 again as far as the public release goes we talked about this, it has to be out before the 24th of October and it will be out before the 24th of October. So you can expect iOS 17.1 to come out tomorrow at around 10 a.m. Pacific time. As usual, Apple should release iOS 17.1 to the public. Now, here's one of the main reasons why I love this update. And again, I suggest everyone to update as soon as possible to iOS 17.1 this right here this huge improvement on the performance of ios 17 it actually is amazing now compared to the ios 17 initial release ios 17.0 this is a huge update here so you can see the multi-core score here with geekbench 6 is at 7405 which means that it has an increase over 500 points over the initial release of ios 17 this, of course, will make your device work faster and smoother. And you can see also the single core score. It was around 2,600 2, with the initial release of iOS 17. And you can see we also have there about 300 points increased, which again is amazing when it comes to performance. And you will even notice it not just by the scores here with Geekbench, but also just like daily using your iphone on ios 17.1 you will notice that it's actually an amazing update and makes your iphone run really smooth when it comes to new updates of course battery life is really really important now i was actually disappointed with the first couple of betas of ios 17.1 but since beta 3 i actually had a quite good battery life on my device so here we have the last 10 days we have here a few days with the rc1 version and then the rc2 in the last two days here you can see it's actually quite good so right here with exactly about 25 percent battery you can see four hours on screen four hours 23 minutes and then we have here probably around 70 percent battery six hours 54 minutes and then right here you can see at around 80 percent battery almost 10 hours 9 hours 57 minutes on screen which is actually quite good so expect the battery life on your ios 17 device to be a bit better not something that will actually be a game changer but a bit better than the battery life you're getting on ios 17.0.3 now here are a few more reasons why this update is actually quite big in my opinion and it's really important and one of them is this right here a lot of people complaining about the iphone's 15 screen burn-in it's actually not a burn-in according to apple this is something called image persistence and it's actually fixable with a software update and iOS 17.1 is that update that will fix this problem if you have if you have it on your device, of course. Then you will have also the heating problem. So a lot of people maybe have not updated to iOS 17.0.3, which will resolve the heating issues with the iPhone 15s. Well, if you didn't, then you can just update to iOS 17.1. Of course, this update will also have that fix. Another problem will be fixed is with the keyboard now the keyboard on ios 17 if you have used your device a lot on ios 17 you will notice that sometimes it's actually lagging a lot and it's not that responsive that has also been fixed here with ios 17.1 which is really great one of the main concerns with iOS 17 of a lot of users has been significant locations, which actually would turn on automatically when you update 
to iOS 17. I had that happen on my device. I always keep it off. I just came here to basically talk about this problem and I saw that it was on. Basically, iOS 17 did turn it on on my device without me requesting to do that. Now, that problem has been also fixed with iOS 17.1. And iOS 17.1 will also fix a lot of other problems like low sound for the notifications. It will also fix the problem, of course, with the radiation of the iPhone 12 series, which actually have been banned in France, so that update will also fix that problem for people th that have uh, those devices. Now, of course, there won't be just fixes and stuff like that. There are also new features and changes. Of course, some of them we have here new standby options. If you go to display here, you will have new options for the standby mode. You will have a ton of different improvements for the music app, the ability to set albums as shuffled photos on your lock screen, and of course, other features as well, which we did talk about on previous videos, so I'm not gonna go through all of them in this video. Now, here we have another thing to talk about, something that is maybe a bit off topic, but it's related to iPhone updates, and it's really interesting. Now, we had a report from Mark Grumman, who, as you probably know, if you have been around the iPhone, basically iPhone skiing, probably have heard about him. So according to Mark Grumman, Apple is planning a new system for their retail stores, which will allow them to update devices before they sell them. So basically, when you're buying a new phone, if it has been, let's say, in the package for about two months before you bought it, it will have an older iOS version than the one that's current, of course, with all the fixes and all that stuff. Now, what Apple will do is that they will basically have a device on their stores where you can just place the iPhone's package and it will update the phone without even opening it at all. So when you buy a new phone, it will always have the latest software installed on the phone. Now, this is really, really interesting. We have to wait. I believe it will actually start. They will start to do this around the end of this year. And it's really interesting. We'll have to wait and see how it's actually implemented and how it works. But it looks very, very interesting. And for the last part, should you update to iOS 17.1? Now, of course you should. And again, as I said at the beginning of the video, I suggest every iPhone user that has a device on iOS 17 to just go ahead and update immediately once they have iOS 17 on their software update page here, iOS 17.1, of course. And if you're on a beta and you already have it, if you have the RC version installed, just make sure you have installed the second RC version and you will be able to basically opt out of beta so if you don't want to do that anymore. If you don't want to move on to beta, iOS 17.2 beta, you can just turn them off right here. Otherwise, you're good to go. You don't need to install iOS 17.1 again. You already have the public version with the RC2 that Apple just released a couple of days ago. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. We have a ton of new videos coming out on the new iOS 17.1. So if you don't want to miss any of those, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.